Hello, I'm Kieran from the needlefelter.com. I'm itching to get started on my breed study for needle felters, but I'm waiting on a back-ordered supply. In the meantime, I thought, why not start some other projects? I have a couple dryer balls that are, I would say, past their prime. They've been used quite a bit, and the surface has started to kind of loosen up, so they leave little bits of wool on my clothing. I don't want to throw them away, so I thought, why not use them as the core for some needle felted projects? And the first one I thought I'd start is a needle felted bunny. I looked at reference photos and illustrations of bunnies. I was trying to figure out the pose for the bunny. Sort of roughly landed on a bunny that might be sitting up, kind of the silhouette a bit of an Easter bunny. If I leave the dryer ball as is, I'm going to have to make a pretty big bunny to get that whole ball inside of it. I decided to cut the dryer ball at an angle on both sides to make it slimmer to kind of follow the lines of the bunny's shoulders. Bunnies tend to be, at least when they're sitting, they tend to be slimmer at the top near their shoulders and neck. So I had these cut pieces left over and again, didn't want to just throw them away. So I decided to felt them onto the shoulder area and make that sort of the base of the shoulders and the heads. I started covering the whole piece with core wool. Then I got some cloth wrapped 22 gauge wire and cut some pieces to make the front legs and the back feet. I attached these limbs to the body by poking a hole with an awl and then using some E6000 glue. So I built up the whole shape in core wool with the exception of the ears. I have a collection of semi-precious gemstone beads because I also like to make jewelry from time to time. So I decided to use some 12 millimeter black onyx beads for the bunny's eyes. I created a divot for the eyes and sewed them in place. I decided to make my bunny kind of a, a lighter color and I also wanted to keep this bunny kind of minimal in terms of features and finishing. The reason I love these dog brushes is they have a button on the back and if you press that it releases any leftover wool that might still be in the sort of slicker brush tines. It makes it super easy to clean especially if you're going from say a light color wool to a dark wool or vice versa. So I covered the entire body with my carded top coat. I decided to experiment a little bit and try putting darker toned wool in what would be more the shadow areas of the bunny's body. I built the area up around the beads that I had sewn in for eyes with the carded top coat. And then I lined the eyes with a slightly darker brown. To position the nose and mouth lines, I used an air erase marker and drew that in. And then I felted it in first in a lighter brown wool, just to make sure I had the shapes right and the angles right and the location right. And once I was happy with that, then I added in um, very thin lines with a dark gray wool. I tried to keep the size of the nose, chin, and mouth area small, and again, finish it in a minimalist way. I didn't want to draw too much attention to it, so I didn't want a pink nose on this tan bunny. I just wanted it to sort of be there and give the bunny a pleasant expression, but not draw too much attention to it because I was more interested in the silhouette, the I guess the overall silhouette of the bunny. And then I made a pattern for the ears with a scrap of felted sheet kind of fitted those on with pins. And I made the ears by first felting the top coat using a coarse needle, then switched to medium, then to fine. 
I think it's worth the time to learn how to make a smooth felted sheet, especially for something small like an ear. It doesn't take that long. And as I mentioned earlier, I was kind of going for that chocolate Easter bunny silhouette. So I wanted to position the ears almost standing straight up. So pin the ears in place and then lightly felted them in. Originally, I was thinking I may have to add a little bit more fiber to the base of the ears to or thicken them at the base to really get them to stand up, but it was thick enough or, and well felted enough that they stood up just fine on their own. I also decided that I wanted more of a wispy fur appearance than a really thick fur. So I took thin wisps, laid it on, kind of felted maybe the, the middle third of it, and then folded the top third over that. That gives you a nice kind of fuzzy, furry looking finish without it being too thick. And the other thing as I was putting on the top coat in that sort of shingling technique, is that I was trying to pay attention to the direction that a rabbit's fur grows in. And I tried to follow that as I was putting on this final layer of top coat. I mixed a little bit of white Falkland wool in with the wool on the bunny's chest. I had to tear the wool into shorter staple lengths or fiber lengths for the face and the head because I don't, again, don't like wasting wool. I just don't see the point in felting in really long staple lengths of wool and then cutting it. I'd prefer to try to get the right length or close to the right length before I attach it. But I didn't want to end up with a trash can full of wool that I had cut away. And here's my final bunny. I hope you like him. I'm really happy with the way he came out. Thanks for watching.